Do you believe zombies are solely a figment of cinema? Think again. Concealed under the lush greenery of tropical jungles, a fungus waits with a formula for controlling minds, or more accurately, bodies. Enter the world of Ophiocordyceps, where a spore is just one step away from becoming an ant's greatest terror. This story begins in the year 1859, when naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace came across an unusual fungus infecting carpenter ants. Scientists later named it Ophiocordyceps unilateralis, but most people know it by its pop culture moniker. The zombie ant fungus. It flourishes in warm, humid rainforest, especially in regions of Asia and the Americas, and it targets ants from the tribe Camponotini. Each species of the fungus is so selective that it often pairs with only a single species of ant, a case of host parasite matchmaking. That went terribly well. So how does this fungal puppet master work its magic? It all starts with a microscopic spore landing on an unsuspecting ant's exoskeleton. Using enzymes and brute force, the spore drills into the ant and begins growing. Contrary to what horror films suggest, the fungus doesn't invade the brain. It fills the body cavity, weaving a network of hyphae that wrap around the muscles. The brain stays intact. It's just no longer in charge. Think of it as cutting the car's steering wheel and hotwiring the engine instead. Infected ants soon act strangely. They leave their canopy trails and head down to the forest floor. Convulsions shake them from their branches. Something is literally making them take a dive. Then they begin to climb again, not towards safety, but to a very precise spot. Researchers have found that these ants almost always clamp onto the underside of a leaf or twig about 25 centimeters above the ground. In tropical forests, they favor north-facing leaves with 94-95% humidity and temperatures around 20-30 degrees Celsius. It's as if the fungus has a built-in feng shui compass and hygrometer. The final act of this choreography is called the death grip. The ant sinks its mandibles into the leaf vein with such force that it leaves dumbbell-shaped bite marks. At this point the ant's muscles start to atrophy, it can't let go even if it wanted to. In Thailand scientists discovered that ants execute this bite almost exactly at solar noon, even in death punctuality matters. Once the ant is locked in place, the fungus fortifies its host's exoskeleton, protecting its resource from scavengers and microbes. Then, after 4-10 days, a dark wiry stalk, the fungal fruiting body, pushes out of the back of the ant's head. It looks like a periscope from a horror submarine. This stalk erupts, showering spores down onto the forest floor and nearby ant trails. Any ant that passes by can become the next victim, creating eerie graveyards of 20-30 dead ants per square meter. Nature's version of a zombie apocalypse is localized but efficient. Here's the twist. While Ophiocordyceps seems unstoppable, it isn't invincible. Another fungus can infect it, cutting its reproduction short. This hyperparasite acts like a zombie hunter in the microscopic world, keeping outbreaks in check. What about the mind control itself? Scientists have discovered that Ophiocordyceps doesn't need to invade neural tissue to control its host. It floods the ant's body with chemical messengers and literally puppeteers the muscles. Studies have identified compounds such as sphingosine and guanidinobutyric acid GBA, that could trigger these muscle contractions. Others suspect an ergot alkaloid might play a role. The fungus even secretes metabolites to ward off bacteria and other fungi while it digests the ant. It's not just a parasite, it's a pharmacist and a chemist rolled into one. You might be wondering, is this the origin story for The Last of Us Zombies? Yes and no. The popular video game and TV series took inspiration from Ophiocordyceps, amplifying its concept to human-scale horror. But the real fungus is specialized for ants and other insects. Human brains are safe. Climate change could alter fungal ranges, but there is no evidence that Ophiocordyceps can jump to mammals. So feel free to enjoy the show with your popcorn. As if one species weren't creepy enough, researchers have discovered that Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is actually a complex of many species. Studies in Brazil, Thailand, Japan, and elsewhere have described more than a dozen new species, each tailored to a specific ant. Some species produce a single stalk from the back of the ant's neck, while others grow laterally out of the thorax. Some cause ants to bite leaves, others prefer twigs. In temperate forests, infected ants clamp under twigs rather than leaves to ensure the fungus survives winter. The differences are like regional variations on a macabre recipe. New research keeps pushing the envelope. In 2024 scientists described Ophiocordyceps, Fusiformis spora and several other species, sequencing their genomes and comparing biosynthetic gene clusters. 
These studies aim to catalog the arsenal of compounds the fungi produce, some of which show potential as antimicrobial, immunomodulatory, or anti-cancer agents. Who would have thought that a zombie ant fungus might inspire the next antibiotic? A fascinating footnote is that fossilized leaves show similar bite marks from the Messel pit in Germany, a deposit dating back 48 million years. That means zombie ant fungi have been staging their grim puppet shows since before primates evolved. Whatever your feelings about fungi, they've earned their ecological longevity. While the phrase zombie ant grabs headlines, some scientists argue it oversimplifies a nuanced interaction. The ant doesn't stagger around mindlessly like Hollywood undead, instead it performs a very specific set of behaviors that maximize fungal fitness. This is less of a mind-eating horror and more of a finely tuned symbiotic exploitation. It's terrifying yes but also beautifully precise. In the end, Ophiocordyceps is a testament to evolution's creativity. When soil is poor and competition fierce, why not turn a mobile insect into your fertilizer and spore delivery system? It's a grisly solution, but an effective one. As climate change, habitat loss and other pressures reshape ecosystems, this fungus will continue to adapt, perhaps creating even more bizarre strategies and species. So next time you see a carpenter ant marching along a tree trunk, remember, there's a universe of drama playing out under the bark, spores falling, ants convulsing, chemical puppet strings tugging muscles. Nature writes horror better than Hollywood, and its zombies don't need screenwriters.